Hello everybody, Ben Rogers here, the Raptors Digest, reacting to Toronto Raptors 125-113 win against the Detroit Pistons. Riker, Dwayne Casey's return to Toronto since we've been NBA champions. Uh, Raptors start the season 4-1. A really exciting game for this, this team tonight. Well, if you recall, Ben, last season, the Raptors got swept by the Pistons. They did not mm -hmm. steal one game against their ex-head coach, which was, mm -hmm. I won't say bittersweet, it was just bitter. Nobody wanted to lose yeah. any of those games. So finally they get their redemption game, and it seemed like they were in control from start to finish, Ben. What were your thoughts? This whole game, they, from, from the jump... Pascal Siakam, OG, the whole team came out ready, fired up, ready to go. And we'll preface this whole podcast. The Pistons were didn't have Blake Griffin, didn't have Reggie Jackson. So they were shorthanded, and the Raptors are a superior team regardless. So it was, you know, it's what you expected from, from this game. They handily, the first quarter, they, they won by nine. They won pretty well every quarter except for the second. Oh, and the fourth. Uh, but they won their the first and third by big <laughs> margins. Yeah, like, I was reading the box score wrong, but uh, the first guy we got to talk about is Pascal Siakam. 30 points, 5 assists, 5 rebounds tonight, and it, it's we sound like a broken record because all games this season, Pascal has just come out hitting shot after shot, and it's not like he's getting, because especially two years ago, the shots Pascal would get would be within the flow of the bench mob, layups around the rim, maybe open, completely open threes. Last season, a lot of his buckets came off Kyle Lowry feeding him on the fast break, kickouts from Kawhi, you know, wasn't the most create. He, he was able to create in the post sometimes when he had smaller players on him, but this season, he's taken people off the dribble. He had a Jack Armstrong out here roasting Thon Maker to death, saying he's going to have nightmares of Spicy P because he was doing cross after cross, step back three, three of six from the three-point line. What did you see from Pascal Siakam tonight, Riker? Well, Jack was on fire tonight. I, I know he said, mm -hmm. what did I see from Siakam, but Jack was on fire tonight. He always knows what to say, <laughs> and... Who was it? Norman Powell. When Norman Powell had a crossover on somebody Brown, I don't know. I don't follow the Pistons enough to know who all their no-name bench players are. But <laughs> somebody Brown. Jack said he made Brown look like a pylon out on the street. Absolutely useless. <laughs> I'm still laughing from that one. That's fantastic. Shout out to Jack Armstrong. Um, one of the best there is, really, in this industry. Um, but what I saw from Pascal Siakam tonight, and already the headlines are coming out on. NBA.com, the videos are being made on YouTube, the highlight montages. People are saying Siakam showing his superstar potential in tonight's game, mm -hmm. and I certainly agree with that, Ben. We're going to be talking about him probably every single night because he's developing into the A1 guy on this team, and we're going to continue to say that. But tonight, he just did it so masterfully and at such a high percentage. But I also want to mention that as a team, Mm -hmm. Not one single person shot below 50%, except for Chris Boucher, but he only played the last few minutes of the game. And we almost yep. shot 50% from the three as a team. So this was a game that they were obviously going to win, the Toronto Raptors. Yeah, certainly. When your team is on fire like it was tonight, it's, it's going to be tough to lose no matter who you're playing, and especially when you're going up against a shorthanded Pistons team. But, yeah, you mentioned it, Pascal Siakam. He's he's getting taking the league by storm. People are starting to recognize his game. And a player that's also getting some recognition now from some of the national media reporters is OG Ananobi. 13 points, 8 rebounds tonight, 2 steals, and... You know, he's not going to come out here with the box score that's going to light you on fire. But OG's defensive ability and his improved rebounding has been such an asset for this roster this season. Yeah, absolutely. He looks like he looks like a man out there. Mm -hmm. There's two kinds of players on the Toronto Raptors. There are the OGs who just look bigger than everyone else. And then there's yep. the Patrick McCaws that just look really way. They look underfed. But OG... <laughs> He is strong built, and it, <laughs> I just it's a stark contrast. But he he has the ability. Oh, Boucher and McCaw under the box. <laughs> exactly, you know exactly. What, and then on the the other side, you have uh, Kyle Lowry and OG Ananobi. All thickness, Fred VanVleet, yeah, Marcus All. Listen, I, I'm sure it's not just me, Ben. Um, so. You have a supreme athletic ability to be able to grab rebounds, to play defense, to 
position himself well, you know, whether it's finishing mm-hmm. with, with contact layups. Once the jump shot comes along, he should be fine. He should be well on his way to being a good player. And like I said, he's the one guy you want to give as many minutes as possible because you know that Siakam's going to be locked in come playoff time. Van Vliet, Lauer, you you know you're going to want to run those guys. A question mark mm-hmm. of the starters is still OG. How good can he yep. be? How much can we rely on him? So it's good to see him get run. Yeah, certainly. And, you know, that thickness that we see from the whole, almost the whole starting unit besides Siakam. But Siakam's gotten bigger, especially from his rookie season. You know, it's such an asset for their ability to run the floor. The, the team is fully athletic. And even though you brought up a guy like McCaw, who is a slimmer frame for an NBA player, he's super wiry and jumpy. And we saw him actually get some run today. I think it was his uh, highest minute total for the season, but five points, a couple assists, three rebounds. But like OG, and to a lesser extent, the, the value of McCaw is more so, so seen in the little things. And his defense tonight was actually pretty good, pretty wiry, got got under some of the piston skin. Yeah, I mean, he didn't... Words plus minus on the team. Yeah. But there's always stats that are deceiving that mm-hmm. really don't paint the full picture. Um, but I, I like... I'm also an advocate for Patrick McCaw because I think that he brings out a pretty good intensity on defense. Sometimes he mm-hmm. over-defends. Um, that's, that's a yeah. big criticism Gets that I too have jumpy. Mm-hmm. Too jumpy. He's playing up too much, like way past the, the line. You don't need to be above the three-point line. As long as you're a step back and you have a hand in the face, that's sufficient. But, um, yeah, Ben, we can, talk about, we can talk all day about all the starters, basically, except for Gasol. Everybody showed up. Almost, everybody almost had 20 points. Uh, it was yeah, a very Gasol only played 15 minutes as well. Yeah, but listen, he's, he's playing himself off of this roster. That's, that's what I'm thinking. And... You could say that maybe... Well, he had a solid game. He had a solid game in the, the minutes he played tonight. Six points, four rebounds, two of three from the field. Hit, knocked down his three. I thought he was looking pretty solid in, in this one. I'm, I'm not really sure why he didn't get that much run. He had three fouls in the 15 minutes, but... Pop you know, quiz. He, he has had a slower start to the season. Pop quiz. What is the value that Gasol provides this season on the team? Defense and ability to stretch the floor as the five-man, to pass the ball... You know, I, I think tonight he played a pretty solid game in the 50 minutes of run he got. I, I, I don't know. See, in a game like this, in a game like this, mm-hmm. I would say yep. that Ibaka is much more effective. Because, not that he necessarily should be. I mean, you have a big lumbering guy like, um, who's the center on the Pistons? Andre, Andre Drummond. Drummond. Andre yeah. Drummond. Yeah. You have a big lumbering guy. That should be a good matchup for Gasol, right? They kind of mm-hmm. size up in terms of being able to battle it down in the post. But, um I, I, if you if you if you say defense and be able to stretch the four at the five position, Ibaka comes into my mind a little bit quicker than Marc Gasol does. To be frank with you, I, I still consider Ibaka or sorry Gasol to be a good playmaking big. But if he's not able to produce in the other factors, we have a lot of playmakers this season. We have Pascal Siakam able to create a shot, OG being more confident with his dribble, and then two point guards basically that were running at the in the backcourt in Van Vliet and Lowry so I'm I'm not as high on Gasol moving like starting now basically I'm I'm a little bit suspicious of or wary of the amount of time that he's going to get moving forward I agree with you at the especially the first couple games of the season we saw Gasol struggle but I think especially in that game against the Magic yesterday or the last last game two days ago now he, he really clamped down Vucevic like we saw in the playoffs. He's He's been doing Marc Gasol things, and I don't think it's necessarily Marc Gasol playing his way out of the rotation that might lead him on the bench. I think it's going to be Serge Ibaka, the, the original man himself, Mafusi Chef, playing on fire because... So far, this has been, you know, it's a very small sample size. Serge Ibaka's best season. He had 19, a, a hot, fiery night for him again tonight. 19 points, 6 rebounds, 9 of 15 from the field. And, you know, from, I, I, I'd say Marcus Gasol's turned his season around from the very slow start he had. But Ibaka's been the complete opposite. He's been on fire the whole way through. What have you seen from Ibaka tonight and just... His, his over, he looks so much more confident with his jumper this season and finishing around the rim. What have you seen from Serge? What have you seen from Serge, Ben? I feel like I've been rambling a bunch this uh, podcast. Well, you know, I mentioned it. Serge Ibaka, he's, he's out here playing defense. He looks revitalized, and it's kind of wild how two seasons ago he looked like a completely washed up player. He looked like a guy that we should trade, dump his contract because Masai gave him that big deal, and... 
You know, he's ever since he's been moved to the center position, he's completely turned his career around. And, you know, we briefly brought it up in, a po- I think, a couple podcasts ago that if Gasol continues to struggle, that he'll have to be the de facto starter because he's the one that's been top-notch so far this season. And even the playoffs last year for stretches, he's, he was the more consistent guy. If Serge Ibaka can t- continue to knock down these, he, I call it the Mayor Johnson shot because the, those turnarounds with the, the big right underneath you, it's not really a complete like sky hook and it's not really a regular post hook it's one of those weird chuck up shots Sergi Baca has mastered that his threes you see that this season remember remember right when we started this podcast how we how we used to cringe when we'd see Sergi Baca throw up the three whenever he shoots it up now especially this season I'm feeling like it's going down I'm just so impressed from what I've seen of Sergi Baca this season I still cringe when he puts up a three <laughs> and he bricked one if you don't recall at the end of the game that but that other one was why we cringe. wet. Yeah, but he's either he's going to make it or he's going to miss really bad. Like, there's no between for that guy. He, I don't know, maybe it's his form. I'm not sure. But anyways, Ben, we're running a bit long here. Why don't you swing us into the segments? Yeah, certainly. Just just before we uh, we swing in the segments and announce the new name, got to gotta give a quick shout out to Norman Powell for turning his... Uh, Turning his slower start around, had 19 points, 7 of 10 from the field, 3 of 5 from the three-point line. We could, we'll probably talk about Norm a lot more as the season goes along because we're going to need him to be big time to be, you know, to knock off some some of the top-tier teams because we have a tougher schedule coming up against the Bucks and, you know, we go out a West Coast road trip. But you guys, you guys, obviously we had to change the name from the Kawhi Doom like that play of the day. We got your input, and we've, we've decided on the Spicy P Lay of the day. That's the name if you guys are against or whatever let us know in the comment section below but that's what we're rolling with for right now we really liked it so thanks for giving us your input but Riker, do you have a spicy p lay of the day in mind okay well first of all ben we don't have the graphic ready for tonight so we're gonna have that yeah. for the next podcast we're also mm-hmm. gonna shout out to everyone because there was a lot of people that recommended the spicy p lay i'm sure somebody did it yeah. first there had to be the catalyst but uh mm-hmm. we'll mention everybody we'll give the fair dues in terms of who actually deserves the spicy p Lay of the day. I like it. I like that. Um, Mm -hmm. There was a self alley oop, it seemed. A little little tip. There was a kind of a strange play that happened. Pascal Siakam batted the ball down or up to himself and then finished the possession. That that was spicy. Or just his play in general. His splashing it from three and crossing up Thon Maker. Um, He's all deserving of the award. But Ben, I'm sure you have a play in particular in mind. Yeah, certainly. I was thinking of that cross that he had at the end. I believe it was the third, I want to say, where he, he just cleared everyone out, said, you know, this is this is my shot, hit that step back contested three. Uh, it wasn't a three. It was a long two over Thon, but certainly, certainly wet, certainly a swish bomb. So shout out to Pascal Siakam for turning himself into one of those guys that can create and get those shots down. But not all plays can be the spicy p lay of the day. And some just make you say, oh, geez. Riker, you have an OG's play in mind? Uh, not necessarily. No, do you, Ben? <laughs> Honestly, I was I was looking for an OG, especially at the end of this one, and I I didn't really catch one in mind. You know, I we could throw it to Dwayne Casey out there for uh for just everything he said, everything he said last season, and bringing up that quote about how the Raptors don't know what it feels like to taste a championship and how the culture is different in Detroit. That comment did not age well at all. And <laughs> prior to this game, he he came out and said, "I'm not salty one bit. I'm really happy for the team, Masai, and all that sort of stuff." And that's a, that's a nice sentiment, nice thing for him to say after. But after you're gonna trash on the team last season, and I was a big Dwayne Casey fan. People that listen to the pod, we did a full. We only have one season of recording the podcast while Dwayne Casey was coach. But I was always pretty friendlier. I always liked what he did, despite the fact he struggled coaching the playoffs. But after he was throwing shade at the team after, I was a bit, you know, that that was tough to hear. So, you know, it was nice to get the win against Dwayne Casey this season. Yeah, I totally agree with that. And I'm not a fan of apologizing for water under the bridge. So I don't disagree with him just saying that he's not upset or whatever, not giving necessarily an apology. But I definitely agree that it's right. It's good to come out and get that victory. But mm-hmm. this brings us into this could have been used i guess for the next play but the next segment but the final one the one the only the demar carroll gold star award for worst performance of the night ben it's hard to dole it out especially it's not going to go to anyone on the raptors because holy goodness they yeah, played everyone a, was as good of a team game as you possibly could so with that being said 
Is there anybody that is deserving of the gold star tonight, or are we abstaining for the first time ever from providing? No, a gold we star? we never abstain from throw, throwing out the Demari Crow Gold Star Award. Luke Kennard, he's he's been having a solid season for the Detroit Pistons this year. He came out and got absolutely clamped by the Toronto Raptors defense. You know whether whoever was on him, they they weren't letting him get those shots fired up. He's one for four from three, one for six from the field, only three points, a minus twenty five for the game, the worst of the night. You know Luke Kennard, he he's getting that out there. For the Detroit Pistons, and you know, it was nice to see the Toronto Raptors come out. Andre Drummond's a solid player, Kennard's a solid player, Morris. They have some decent players on the roster. D Rose was actually looking really nice for them. I'm surprised he didn't get more minutes. I'm not sure if he's on a restriction at all, but you know, it's it was nice to see the Toronto Raptors come out and squash this team, especially if there might have been somewhat of a mental block with the Raptors haven't been beaten Dwayne Casey yet or something like that. Yeah, and you bring up a good point. If there was such thing as an anti Damari Carroll Gold Star Award, so an actual true gold star for good performance. I would definitely give that to Derrick Rose because he's playing like a starter. You know, he's playing like a guy that I think is actually deserving of being a legitimate point guard or maybe shooting guard in today's NBA. 16 and 10, a good double double on limited minutes and shooting a very high percentage. He drew a lot of attention from the Raptors defense, and he's a player that I used to really enjoy way back in the day before all the injuries and the drama and the lawsuits, and so it's good to see D. Rose balling out this season. I hope he gets a chance to, you know, maybe step up to that starting position. It's probably unlikely, but he's playing like he deserves it right now. Yeah, certainly, and some of the dribble moves he, he's making, that you, you haven't seen that in a few years from D. Rose. When I remember one possession, Spicy P came up on the hedge, and D. Rose threw it in between the screen and the hedger, which is a classic D. Rose move, and then ended up kicking out to Thon, I believe, for, for a three. I'd like to see some more vintage D. Rose highlights, some vintage D. Rose stuff. So, yeah, shout out to D. Rose, shout out to the Toronto Raptors, shout out to Spicy P. They, we're out here cooking. We can't get too ahead of ourselves as we've had a lighter schedule to start off the year. Playing the Bucks, I believe, on Friday. I, I want to say Friday or Saturday. So that's going to be a nice test. we got a, a few tougher teams coming up. So we'll see what the Toronto Raptors are all about. Make those tighter championship predictions or how deep we're going to go in the playoffs after we see us play a few more good teams. Riker, everyone out there, you're the best for making this fire. Check out the Twitter, the Instagram, all this cool stuff. Riker, any last words? Um, you know what this sound is, Ben? <laughs> it's a raptor eating because we're eating. We're feasting. <laughs> eating a piston. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's it for me. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> <laughs>